In order for you to own and build on a website, you're going to need at least a couple of things. You'll need a domain name, you'll need a tool to get or transfer files from your computer to your website and from your website to your computer, and you're going to need what is called web hosting. Web hosting is what allows individuals and organizations to make their websites accessible to others via the interweb, otherwise known as the World Wide Web. You can see that when you do a Google search here for web hosting, you're going to get over 500 million results popping back at you. So you can see there's no shortage of options to choose from. This video will help you in your search. While it is possible for you, the individual, to have your own hosting service on your own computer at your own home connected to the internet, uh, that's not what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Because 99.9% .9 of you will be purchasing web hosting from a company that specializes in hosting websites. You know, kind of like your host skaters or dream host or one of the other bazillion web hosting companies out there. Now, I'm a huge do-it-yourselfer, but hosting sites on my own computer, not so much. Now, before you purchase what you need, you should think a little bit about what you want. What is your end goal here for your website? Now, I know that there will be some changes as your site evolves, but in order for you to get started in the right direction, you should at least have a bit of a plan laid out first. For example, ask yourself these questions and grab your pen and paper and write them down. What is my budget for getting things started? How long will that budget last without any income? Will I need a bunch of traffic just to break even? Will I sell things? And if so, what can I sell? Digital goods, physical goods, or both? Will you be hosting large file downloads? Will you have videos on your site? Will I need a secure connection in order to accept credit cards? These are just some of the questions you should write down and refer back to as you do the research for the hosting service you're looking for. Now, I want to first off point out a good resource to go to and a bookmark, and that's our buddies over at Wikipedia. Just do a search there for web hosting service and you'll end up over here. And if we scroll down a tad bit and under types of hosting, these guys give a great demonstration of each type of possible web hosting you'd be interested in. From the free that I would highly recommend not getting into to the shared which is the most popular and a great way to start things out. Next up would be the reseller web hosting, virtual dedicated server or the VPS, virtual private server, dedicated hosting, and they give you a bit of a comparison between each of these. And this kind of starts off with the least expensive, that being free, and goes up to the most expensive, which is the co-location. Now, cloud hosting is kind of sort of one of the newer guys, and this is ideal for a lot of reasons, but it has a couple of drawbacks that may be deal breakers for you. So by all means, check into these as possible options. Now, one of the more popular services out there is called HostGator. I use HostGator. Actually, I use four different web hosting services, but that's information for a different video. But for the time being, I wanted to point out right here, big, bold letters, unlimited. Don't let this be the carrot that brings you into buying their particular service. Nothing against HostGator because if we check out another popular service, one that I use, they use that word quite a bit too. Unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, unlimited database. Well, the thing is though, is that unlimited is not so unlimited. Whenever your site reaches a certain amount of resources being used or bandwidth being used, your site is going to get shut down, plain and simple. So don't let this be the only thing that draws you into buying their service. I don't want to say anything bad about HostGator or any of the other hosting services out there because they all do that. I just want to bring it to your attention that unlimited does not mean unlimited. Now, uh, one thing too you want to know is that even though you've been with a particular service for a long time, whether it's several months or several years, if you come to the point where you've either outgrown that particular service or you had several instances where you're not liking their customer support, don't think that you're chained down to that service just because they're watching your websites. No, you can always transfer to another one. Just as they say here at D9, and this is one of the things that I use them for, to actually transfer my reseller account from HostGator, I've got an individual hatchling plan with them now, but I had a reseller account with them and I had like 25, 26 different sites hosted on that reseller account. I moved them all over to D9 and they did it all for me. So it was like nothing that I had to do except for give them some names and some emails and bing, bang, boom, they did all the heavy lifting for me and it was totally free. So just know that you're not chained down to a particular service if you find that their support or whatever reason you feel you should move, go ahead and move. Now, Rackspace has been around for quite a while and they're 
One of their specialties is that cloud server that I was referring to earlier. The major plus of this is that the traffic spikes that you might encounter and that would get your site shut down on a D9 or a HostGator or a DreamHost or a Bluehost on a cloud server, not so much because the cloud server uses the resources of many different servers, whereas other servers, the VPSs or the dedicated or the shared, they're using one server. And whether it's dedicated or shared, whenever your website hits that particular spike, boom, you're shut down. These guys, whenever you hit that particular spike, they share those resources out over other servers. So you never really experience a spike. You never get shut down as a result of using excessive resources. The drawback to a cloud type server is that they are being shared over several different servers. So if privacy is a big issue to you in that respect, I mean, they say that everything's secure, but comparing that to a dedicated server, which is on one physical location and on a cloud server, it's over the course of several different physical locations. If that's the deal breaker for you, well, you should consider that in deciding on if you're going to move everything to the cloud or not. A couple of tools I want to mention here. Uptime Robot at UptimeRobot.com. Totally free. And this is a service that will monitor and alert you when your site or sites are down. They'll send you an email or a text message and if it happens enough times you might want to consider that as a way of saying bye bye hostgator or bye bye dream host another neat tool is if you come across a site that loads super fast and you visit it regularly and you never see that it's down and you want to see who their hosting service is this is the site you want to check out who is hosting this.com just put in their website here and it'll give you all those details. Hopefully this video will answer a lot of those questions that you wrote down earlier in helping you determine which hosting service or which hosting package and service is best for you. That's going to bring us to the end of this video on web hosting. Thank you very much for watching and you have a great day.